Hi, I'm Dr. Lauren Spring. And I'm Dr. Sarah Kafashan. And this is My, My Favorite, Favorite Lesson. Lesson. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to My Favorite Lesson, Season 2. I am one of your hosts, Lauren Spring. And I'm here with Lauren. I'm Sarah Kafashan. And we are lucky enough to be here today with the amazing Zandra Bear Lowen, who is a faculty member at Conestoga, and you're going to hear all about her journey uh, to the college and um, what she teaches here. Thanks for being here, Zandra. Thank you for having me. I'm excited for today. Mm -hmm. So why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about how you ended up at Conestoga, areas that you teach in the college, etc. Sure. So I'll just open in my language. So Ozawi Gunu Ape Nishikaz, Amasko Dodoram, Constance Lake First Nation, Ninjaba, uh Nishnabe Kwe and Dao. Um my English name is Zandra Bear Lowen. I am Bear Clan from Constance Lake First Nation and I'm an Ojibwe woman. My journey to Conestoga was a very, I guess, you know, lessons all along the way mm -hmm. when we go through our careers. So uh, up until this point, I really just worked in community. So my own community in Constance Lake First Nation in Northern Ontario. Mm -hmm. And uh, we transitioned in the South about eight years ago and really just trying to focus on our kids and their journey in terms of, you know, what they were going to be passionate about and how they can explore that. In the North, there's not that many opportunities. So when we came down, I really just, you know, was looking for career and next steps with Indigenous communities. So mm. I did. I did uh, work for a couple communities. And by that time, you know, I really had to take a deep look as to going into situations with eyes wide open, knowing what I was getting into, but going into it anyway mm. and really having a hard time. Um, really just, you know, getting into community and building that trust and respect and all of that in order to do good for the kids. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was a real hard lesson to understandably so, but really just trying to like, I am so passionate about our youth that I didn't have just free range coming into any community. Mm -hmm. But I had to build that trust and respect. And I just was, you know, at the point where I wanted to have that impact on our youth. Mm. And, you know, just trying to really grasp within community to be able to do that, but not, but not being able to at the end of the day. So with that, you know, you, you, you deal with a whole, you know, you deal with a whole, um, community when you go in. And so you never know whose toes you're really stepping on until it's too late. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so I guess, you know, that would be my, my lesson in terms of community and, you know, really trying to just find, uh, sustainable way to take care of myself, to take care of my family and knowing I had to make a shift, but I didn't know exactly where or what mm -hmm. and actually saw the posting. And I thought, you know, let's put my name in and see what happens. Cause that's what you do when you, you know, you apply for jobs. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't hear for a couple of months, but then all of a sudden the email came in and oh, we'd like to do next steps. And so Okay. Here I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're so happy that happened, Zandra. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, lucky Conestoga. <laughs> yeah. And lucky, lucky me too. I really enjoy being here. Mm -hmm. It's been a different type of experience in terms of that work-life balance that I've never had before. Mm -hmm. So that's a real adjustment as well. And I know we'll get into also just teaching here, but yeah, it's just been a really like eye-opener. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned, I mean, there's a lot in what you just shared some of these things like going in with eyes wide open and sort of this sense that it might be tricky mm -hmm. um a couple threads there too of obviously community and how what that means when you're moving from place to place and i should say for listeners too if you want to know more about <laughs> Sandra's like detailed life trajectory and um 
multiple amazing kind of careers that you've had, you can listen to the Let's Talk Careers podcast that she's part of um, too, if you want to get into the the weeds there, because um, there's a lot of biographic information. Um, but yeah, this this sort of focus on youth as your children. You have two children. I have three. Three children. Mm, yeah. So as they're growing, can you talk a little bit more about that? Sort of what what community has meant moving from place to place, and and your real passion for youth experience and community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we moved to Brantford and. We really tried to just put some roots down there. So we didn't move community to community. I was the one that was commuting to these communities in the South. Yeah. So it was one drive was like hour and a half. Uh, Another drive was like hour 45 minutes. Um, My closest commute was actually in Brantford. Uh, And yeah, my nonprofit experience was about, yeah, 30, 35 minutes drive. So you know, always just exploring these types of um, opportunities for employment and career and all of this um, was really the place where, you know, Brantford was that hub for us at home. Mm-hmm. And I really, we really try to like think about the kids in that way because they, I didn't want them to move very often mm-hmm. in my own childhood. That's what happened to me. Mm-hmm. I, tra- I moved from city to city with my dad and his work and Back in the day, like being First Nations, the only First Nations student in class was a bit of a hit because the teacher would always just announce you at the, you know, front of the class. And this mm-hmm. is our new student, Zandra mm-hmm. Bear. And then mm-hmm. it was like, Bear. Oh, and then, you know, all the stuff happens after. Mm-hmm. Um, so with them, they really just, yeah, were able to feel grounded. We found our spaces I was just telling my class the other day, like it was hard to transition because you don't know where you can connect. We don't know like our spaces uh, with the land. And it was just all about exploring the South and figuring out, you know, where we can go to to ground ourselves, to connect and just to, yeah, take care of ourselves and heal Mm -hmm. um, from being away from our community and our home and everything we knew and my family and everything, you know, that happens to anybody really that moves away from home, that culture shock, even though it's not a real difference in culture, is very um, urbanized and not, like the population is, is a lot down here compared to the north. So just really, yeah, just trying to do everything I could with um, what we had for our kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really curious about the kind of community work you did, Zandra, as well as, you know, youth. What kind of ages were you focusing on and was there ever an intergenerational impact? Um, The context for my question is you're talking a lot about your little community, your family and kind of navigating that. And yet you're kind of going into a new community. Right. And, Mm -hmm. And you're saying that trust piece was really important. So. That's a wider context, but really curious about what kind of community work, um, who are the youth, how did you build those relationships? Yeah, so I was principal of my community for for seven years, and our, our school was K-12. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did some nonprofit work with Inspire for a year, and then I went into um, Delaware First Nation for as a director. So I really just oversaw a lot of their programming. Um, they didn't have a school in community because it was so small that wow. most of their kids bust into, you know, their neighboring town in their school, their public school there. Mm-hmm. We had a little kindergarten with a kindergarten teacher there. She had been there for many years. Um, and so I didn't really go into classroom there because the kids were just so small and I was just learning. And, you know, then the opportunity came to be at Kettle and Stony Point which is a much bigger community and they have their own school K to eight there. Mm. And then they'll bust their kids into the high school again, to the local town. So yeah, my heart really, I think is really with the high school kids mm. because that's where I feel like I started to understand who I was, mm-hmm. but never saw anybody as a teacher, as a principal, right? you know, nobody that I could see that 
in anywhere that I went in my daily life that I would see myself kind of represented by my people. When you yourself were in high school. Yeah, when I was young. So I think that's why I feel like those youth in particular for me, I'm very passionate about because for them to see me possibly in that position, maybe they can see themselves wherever else, you know, wherever their dreams are going to take them. Um, so yeah, I think that's, you know, where my passion would lie is with those, um, those age students. But then coming to Conestoga was like, mm. same, but different. <laughs> it's a teeny bit older than high school in some cases. Older, um, but the connections are just like so invaluable. And those that reach out are those that, you know, I can, you know, assist and help and provide context or, you know, just... The littlest things too, like I don't, I don't discourage any type of contact just so like, cause that's the connection. And I really, in my class, try to say that from the beginning. And I will always say like, we are in this class together. We are building this relationship so that Mm -hmm. you can understand, you know, First Nations, uh, Indigenous people in Canada overall, but we need to talk because you need to earn this and I want to help. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think um, those that were uh, students that I've had in person were really much more, I think, valuable because you have that contact uh, and it's just a different energy. And then those online, uh, you know, I still enjoy, you know, connection and relationships. It's just a very like, yeah, different energy, I would say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you want me to go into anything more further. No, with no, what I mean, you were that, asking. That, that was great. We'll I get mean, there, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. I mean, what really stood out for me was, you know, it sounds like so you have this rich experience in community, specifically in education, mm-hmm. right? And you talked about how um, being that representation for the youth was important for you. Would you say that's kind of one of the driving forces that led you to work in in education, whether it's K to 12 or or post-secondary? Yeah, I would say because there was a point in time when I was about to graduate high school and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I had a coach reach out to me because I played volleyball at an elite level for Manitoba. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And he was really um, a part of my, you know, one of my favorite lessons in life Mm. learning, but really (laughs) just kind of sat me down and said, like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to study? We'll get you into the program and you need to tell me. And I was like, I don't know. And so he went through this with me mm-hmm. to say like, okay. yeah, took the time. It really did. Yeah. And he just kind of like, okay, these are the two options from what I'm hearing. And he's <laughs> like, you could, you know, start your phys ed here with us. So it would be like a phys ed diploma and he would transfer out and finish your degree somewhere else. Cause at the time, like it was Mouse Pina college university. Mm. So they had only so many courses in, you know, phys ed. So the other option was recreation, and that was a two-year program, but it was very intense. And uh, I didn't really know if I was going to, you know, be able to last in an intense program for two years because mm-hmm. my high school, yeah, I just, you know, had a hard time finishing up. I did my grade 12 year by myself. I was living in my house. My mm-hmm. family had lived out. Yeah, they had moved out to yeah. Constant Lake already, mm-hmm. so... Yeah, I just kind of was, you know, exploring what I was going to be really passionate about. But as soon as I decided to do that and I went out and I was in the college, I just like, I want to be this teacher. Like Mm -hmm. I want to be, I remember Les Melbourne, one of my phys ed, you know, instructors, which was, he's just so passionate about this content. I've had other really great professors in that. I just can't think of their names. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so that was kind of like how I really wanted to be teaching. And so then I started to work towards that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, I met my husband and things changed, but that's another, <laughs> that's the, let's talk career. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that I did before. Little footnote. Folks <laughs> can look up that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> too. Yeah. Um, there's so much in what you said. One of the things being 
identity, you know, and, and focusing on drawing from your own experience in high school, thinking like, okay, who am I? How am mm-hmm. I going to get through this? Where am I going in future? Can I bring my full self there? Um, and then, yeah, seeing that in, in young people today. You also mentioned something neat about now working at Conestoga and kind of a different way of working. Um, for faculty, it's less of like a a nine to five, these are your hours. And then, you know, you, you sign off for the day kind of thing. Um, how, you know, what sort of part of your identity maybe has been able to come forward in this new work context at the college? Hmm. Yeah, I guess it would be in terms of the teaching, really, uh, allowing my story Mm -hmm. and the opportunities that you were either there or not there that I get to share. And so, you know, what I believe, you know, as a First Nations person, when we teach anything, we always bring a part of ourselves in it. Mm-hmm. And we bring our experience forward so that our students can connect and really say or hear that that is, um, you know, that she brings her authenticity to the table, that she's genuine about the experience she's had how that could be connected to the course content Mm. and how, you know, if anything, you know, that they would be able to take something away to move forward with. So, yeah, just really bringing that my that part of myself forward in that way, whereas working in community, I always felt like in service to the youth. Mm. And that was my main goal. And even in coaching, because I coach volleyball, it's always that team or those players Mm -hmm. that I would make decisions about. And so that's the very forefront of my thought when I worked in community. When I was at, when I am in teaching here, it really is like bringing my authentic self forward. So, you know, that part of it is being heard, but also I get to, I get to actually hear that out loud from my own self and um, kind of have that healing piece or a remembrance piece of, you know, family that have passed or um, a really different type of reflection now that I'm, you know, much older in years and you get to kind of more stories to share. Yeah. (laughs) But you can think back differently about the things that you've gone through. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's like, uh, you know, it could be a positive, but it also could be a negative as well. Can you say more about that? What, what's, the, what's the positive and the negative part? Well, you know, I think the positive is kind of the things that I mentioned in terms of like you can say it and you say it out loud and you can hear it and it feels different. Um, and then, you know, the, the negative part is that how does it make you feel? Mm. Because it can really be upsetting. You know, there's times where in class you're fighting back emotion Mm -hmm. or you take a minute or you just pause slightly longer than you would Mm. have when you're talking and moving on to the next point. Um, And then like really at times with classes, I've been really like just truthful and say like, sorry, that kind of really hit me. So, Mm -hmm. you know, let's take a five minute break and then we'll come back, you know, or it's really um, close to break anyway. So we would just take our, you know, regular. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I just was like, what? How did that happen? Um, Yeah. So I think um, that would be kind of more the negative because you didn't like you don't really know how things are going to hit you Mm -hmm. on any given day. Mm-hmm. Right. So something like if I've taught this one course, you know, every semester that I've been teaching in the beginning for me it was really more like, oh, OK, here it is. You know, it feels more external to me. But then after the th- third time and fourth time, you know, it really starts to like, oh, you know, it really is like that's my people. Mm-hmm. You know, those are the children that never came home or, you know, um, just the, you know, I was talking about yesterday, murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls. And so I have, you know, distant family, distant cousin who's missing for a year now. Mm-hmm. So those types of things are really hard to kind of like, this is for real, you yeah. know. And before, 
when people hear it, like I get it if they're hearing it for the first time and there could be those types of emotions, but they're, they hit differently when it's actually, you know, people Mm -hmm. and, or it's affected your family or, you know, it very, you know, hits close to home and, you know, taking that part and really thinking back as, as a, as a youth and as I, you know, grow and, you know, we explore and we do different things and careers as we kind of move forward, you know, there's always this question like, why, why, and you know, how did I get here? Why Mm -hmm. is it me? You know, because I could be missing. Mm-hmm. Like there's nobody. Series of different yeah. events and yeah. people on your path. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, oh, was I like super naive back then? You know, so you kind of go back in your thoughts in terms of different events or things that had happened. And you're just like, oh, I've had these guardian angels on my shoulders watching mm-hmm. me every step of the way. My ancestors and really just like guiding me. Mm-hmm. And really being accepting and and knowing that is, yeah, kind of like my journey in the last year, in particular with like um, having the courses that I've taught really kind of hit differently lately. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just I take comfort in that piece, but also um, yeah, just trying to navigate it. And because like I said, you never know how you're going to feel on that day when you go through material. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You shared so much rich little nuggets that I want to latch on to, Sandra. But I would like to take a moment and and step back just so our listeners know exactly what you teach at the college. So if you don't mind sharing, you know, which area you're in and what are some of the courses you've been teaching? Okay. Yeah. So I'm in the interdisciplinary school and I teach Indigenous studies. Mm -hmm. So the course that I, I most mostly teach right now is truth and reconciliation. Mm. Uh, and then the degree, you know, mirror course of it is first nation experience. Okay. Yeah. So those are my two primary ones. We are in development of other ones. And so we have more faculty coming on and they're developing and we're trying to roll out different courses at different times. But yeah, I think it's a work in progress that we're getting towards hopefully diploma and degree at Conestoga. That would be Very amazing. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Sign mm-hmm. me up. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you had said just before that these courses are hitting you differently lately. Um, I mean, I can ask you more about it, but is this partially just because the more time you have at the college, you know, you're making them your own in new ways and, and letting things evolve as, you know, you can think back to last year and this worked well or this didn't, or I'm going to share more here. Um, or is it also based on recent events and, and sure this content, like you're saying is very alive, right? Like there, if you're sharing that story about someone in your family who's missing, that's so present, right? It's not just, Mm -hmm. it's not just content on a slide. Mm -hmm. Is it a mix of all of those things that that's making it hit differently or is it students receiving information differently? I just love to hear you say more about that. Yeah, I think really it's the, sharing right so if in the beginning I was bringing stories forward it was a part of who I was but really I think you know when I reflect back it's really it almost becomes external Mm. um and then when you're in a point of your career or even like your own healing and growth Mm. Um, it can hit differently because when you're sharing and maybe I've shared the same story, um, with my classes, I like to, uh, bring forward my aunt who had attended residential school. Mm-hmm. Um, that was actually, that happened this week and last week, but, um, mm-hmm. it just was like, yeah, because I, I don't know. I just feel like I, I miss family a lot more, like being mm-hmm. away from them at a time that, you know, where I was always just very close with them. Um, So that's part of it. I also think like, yeah, you're always, for me, always growing and evolving and teaching these courses, you know, at first, again, external, but really as you share and as you feel strong enough to share, you you share more Mm. 
and then it kind of brings more energy or different energy and or thoughts and reflection and things to the front and I would say most days it's it's fine it just it's the these two last weeks of course material it does really get heavy Mm. and so there is trigger warnings I always tell my students like get the help you need you know to share with friends and family share with classmates if you you know if you have that connection and like, just make sure you take care of yourselves. If you need to move, if you need to drink water, if you need to step away, mm-hmm. then um, like take care of yourself first. But when you're delivering as that instructor, you don't always get the chance in the middle, <laughs> unless yeah. it's really like the one time I had to really just, uh, I need five minutes, we'll come back. Mm-hmm. Um, but you really just want to be able to provide the content uh for that learning because it is all about awareness Mm -hmm. and a lot of the students, you know, their feedback with their reflection assignments is like, this is the first time I'm hearing it, or this is the first time I'm hearing how these stories, if I, you know, share stories, but also I bring in uh, videos and other indigenous voices and people and they will share their stories. And so it just is, it makes it more, real Mm -hmm. instead of like again like words on the slide Mm -hmm. you know because this is um true history that we have in Canada that's not widely known and I just did also another workshop for um a city and again like people are so appreciative to know and understand and learn more and it really is like frustrating and I want to be able to bring that information forward for people to, to listen. And the only way we can connect is if that I share. Mm. So I think it does build you up, but then it also will make you go through things that you didn't maybe think that you had to or needed to, or maybe you thought it was resolved and then it just comes up again and you're (laughs) like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. That's deep. That's deep, deep work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It can it can be. It can be. But um yeah, you always like we we always smudge and then I always have that on the side. So if I'm online, like I have it burning. And so if it's heavy content, if I feel it or if I feel like not that I can connect with students, but if I feel like it's just even a little bit, then I'll start uh burning that sage. And so it helps. Mm-hmm. It helps ground me again and like I'm here for the students. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm so curious because I think you've touched on it, but, you know, it sounded for me and correct me if I'm wrong, that when you were working in community, the focus was very much on community and less on your needs, less yep. on maybe your sharing mm-hmm. per se, because you're there to respond to them. And it sounds like there was an intentional switch because you could go along with just the curriculum and not share yourself, right? And mm-hmm. at, at Conestoga, you could just mm-hmm. use those videos. You could yeah. just use the many voices and stories out there. You didn't have to share your own, but you intentionally chose to. And I'm so curious about that first moment because I can see that it must have been a tipping point, right? To spend most of your career focusing on community and perhaps not ignoring, but, you know, kind of, um, putting your energy on, on the needs of community and the needs of youth, which is so important. And then to suddenly come back to yourself now and say, I'm going to decide to share. And now I need a moment. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm just so curious about what, what made you decide to go there? Yeah, I think that's a real personal healing journey I would say Um, and I don't mind sharing this part but I think you know I always wanted to again serve and give and provide that pathway because education is so important and to be able to kind of take that leadership role in order for our youth to be successful was so important to me And I did ignore myself for a long time. And that really was 
that burnout where I was just like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. If I'm going to these places, eyes wide open, knowing what I'm getting into, why am I doing this? And so the, the opportunity when I was just like, okay, I really just need to start taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. And what is that going to, what is that going to, you know, trusting again, like thinking about how I shared with the let's, uh, let's talk careers, um, really just trusting the universe and really being open to anything that was meant for me that I would choose. And that's a really hard thing to do. Um, when you're in the unknown, but when opportunities present themselves, I feel like, you know, if you are in touch with your own spirit, that you'll know that that's the right opportunity for you. So, mm -hmm. you know, being at Conestoga and being in this position and then like talking about all this history that it's my people's history, that is me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That could have happened to me. Yeah. You know, this has happened to me, you know, and, you know, every single one of us on this earth, we've all have different experiences and stories and pathways and, yeah, truths that you can, you have that choice. And so for me, I think part of taking care of myself is, you know, being able to share and to, to grow from that and to see, yeah, where this, where is this going to take me? Mm -hmm. Because I could be here for, I don't know how long until I, you know, until retire <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know, like you never know what's going to happen. You never know yeah. opportunities that will arise. Cause I feel like if you're open, like they will come and you will know which way you need to go at the end of the day. So um, I just want to do my best and I just want to be my authentic self. And I, I really try to call on my students to do that as well in their assignments. And I really believe that when they hear this history and they reflect, hopefully they can grow too, or they can heal something also. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I have to kind of role model that mm -hmm. within my course. And so I had that, like I've had students really lay things out on the line and stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's where, you know, you can connect with people is like, if I'm making myself, you know, vulnerable, like I'm asking my students to do the same so that they can do that as well. And maybe that's a, something they can explore with themselves more than, you know, the assignment that they hand in to me. Yeah. 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 And thanks so much for sharing that with that with us, Sandra. I appreciate you being willing to talk a little bit about your healing journey. And, and I just wanted to share, you know, Lauren and I had very similar experiences in our own domains, right? And I wanted to share as, as an offering because you're sharing such beautiful information that I think is going to be so rich for our listeners, but very similar to you as, as to when I started to share, right? I, I had an experience in grad school where all my life I've wanted to work in mental health. I'm a social psychologist, not a clinical one. So there wasn't a direct route. And I remember the first time I went in, in grad school, I chose to kind of hide mostly. I didn't share too much because I wasn't confident. And I remember thinking about this, what I call a meta narrative, where in psychology and around the world, there's this notion that there are people who are experts in mental health and they get to quote, treat, quote, the damaged, Right. And I remember thinking there's so many of us who are, quote, the experts or studying to become clinicians who have these experiences. And that's what makes us even better. Do you know what I mean? But by me unrevealing and not sharing that, I'm contributing to the meta narrative. Right. And who else is out there seeing me and thinking, OK, this is just another part of reinforcing that story. And so that was kind of the driver for me. And it sounds like. I, I feel like there's a theme with what you're sharing, right? Of sort of like, yeah. how is that going to impact? And and if I let myself be seen, will that allow my students and those around me to to get that as well? Because there are costs to, to not being seen as well, mm -hmm. right? For me, I felt like I was acting. Like, you know, I was yeah. hiding these pieces of me that um, are so important to me. And I took a lot of time to love and appreciate and value. So... 
It's so important. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there who are just doing things to do things. Yeah. And not knowing what to do maybe or not finding their true passion or not having the time or energy or resources or whatever it is. Um, And I just like, that's where I really think, you know, your openness and to be authentic and you're following your own path, but you don't even know you're on your own path. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, I think it really just comes down to, yeah, not wanting, like just doing things for yourself, which is kind of really hard, hard um, concept for many. And I know like different cultures around the world and how uh, parents are really the driving force of their mm-hmm. children. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if I talk about my own kids, um, I had one really easy, she's off at university, she knows what she wants. I don't have to do anything. I just have to say, <laughs> yeah, you go, girl. <laughs> right. on the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> and then my boy, who is about to yeah, go into his grade 12 year next year, not really knowing what to do. And I'm like, mm. I had to really take a second. I'm like, it's okay. Yeah. You know, just have patience. And he's going to find his way and all we have to keep doing is supporting and encouraging and asking questions and help him explore a little bit more than I didn't have to do for my, my oldest daughter. Right. And then, um, my littlest one who's in grade nine, you know, she, she's just starting her whole high school and she's just really, you know, yeah. Being that rebellious type. (laughs) (laughs) Demanding type and you try on some different identities yeah, until you figure out. That's <laughs> right. experimental phase. So it's just like, oh, and then I think you know, again, like coming to Conestoga really has allowed me to also do this for my kids and be in service yeah. for my own yeah. family in a way that if I was in community, I don't think I would have had the same type of energy or opportunity for them. And so, yeah, I really just believe like, you know, you find your path and you go on it and things work out the way they need to is, is how they should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And making that space, I mean, what you were saying, I, I see it in the way you speak about your own children and their journey and de- journeys and decisions and what you're saying in the classroom. So you opening up, being vulnerable, sharing these parts of yourselves and yourself and your story almost gives them permission to and, and mm-hmm. models that it's okay and that actually helps build a classroom community. Could you talk a little bit more about who the students are who take your courses at the college and if mm-hmm. that comes naturally for them? I mean, I, mean, I would imagine for some of them it does. For some of them it might be a totally new yeah. academic experience, right? Yeah. <laughs> and how, mm-hmm. yeah, how you support them in that. Yeah, so I think I would find a lot of my students are, I would say, international students. Um, I would say many are from India Mm -hmm. and understanding, you know, myself as an instructor, you know, leading these students, I have to understand their style as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so kind of figuring that back end uh, of that piece in terms of, you know, the assignments and or um, really trying to pull them forward into their own voice, I think has been probably one of the hardest things. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I think, um, yeah, those students are also curious, which is almost surprising to me mm-hmm. because uh, they will have good questions. They will have also good reflection. I always try to also get them to like, if they want a part of their reflection is to bring their own experience, but you have to, uh, relate it to the content of the course. Mm. And there's a Mm. wide range so they can pick anything in over the weeks that we've covered. Um, so yeah, most times I, I would say, you know, they really just have a hard time trying to use their own voice and uh, bring in their own vulnerabilities because maybe they've never had a chance to do that before, especially in a school setting Mm -hmm. where it's like, you should learn this. And so you learn that, right? By this date. (laughs) Yeah, by that date and, you know, X, Y, and Z. 
Um, and so, uh, you know, I just try to always, you know, be respectful and encourage and in no way do I try to make this course stressful for them. Mm. Although it's important content, mm -hmm. the focus is uh, more of the reflective piece. And at the end, you know, we learn and we understand. And so we should do better if we know better. Mm. And at the end, that's where they make their allyship plan and like, what can they do to become an ally? Mm. So a lot of the times I would say um, the majority of students is just like they want to learn more. And and then, you know, as their career path goes forward, that maybe they have other opportunities, but at least they have some of that foundational knowledge about Indigenous people in Canada. You know, if those international students stay here or not, they have it. They have yeah. that knowledge. Like, knowledge is so powerful, mm. you know, and um, that's why I think, like, this information is powerful, this course the, that I teach. And um, it could be, like, a game changer for somebody that... How would I even know it's going to affect somebody else? Because I taught this student and they get to go and mm -hmm. have an impact on somebody yeah, else's life, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, years down the line, yeah. right? Yeah, and mm -hmm. so, like, yeah, I think that's just amazing. And, yeah, I don't know. Well, and fascinating, too. I mean, we tend to have this narrative in Canada that there are Indigenous folks and settlers. And then I find a lot of folks who are immigrating here or studying here for a while also come from countries that have a history of colonization. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in, com and in coming here, I don't know if this has been your experience, but might not really know these nuances of Canadian history. Yeah. And so you're not yeah. only sharing this content and parts of yourself and your story, but like this might be the first time they're ever learning about residential schools and these really dark spots on this country that looked pretty flashy, you know, on the posters when they were <laughs> deciding where to where to do their their studies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's part of, I think, our leadership at the highest levels of this country. If we think about our chiefs and the mandates they try to put forward and the things they fight for and the things they want to table with the government is is doing that and for is like doing that is bringing things to the forefront. Mm -hmm. Um not just nationally, but internationally. And, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with acknowledging the past. It's what we do forward that matters the most, I think. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think international students have a, a huge role to play in that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had um, mentioned too briefly in this importance of creating a classroom community and then how that can feel different in person or teaching synchronously online. Are there, yeah, do you find one, my sense is that in person is a little bit easier <laughs> with, with respect to that. Uh, or, or, yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth. <laughs> it's just different. Right. And so, um, I think in class you will have much more interaction. The classes are smaller in size. Mm. Uh, and so maybe that's also why there's more interaction. If it was a bigger class, like I've never had a class of 30 or anything like that. Okay. This, the classes were, you know, the enrollment is different than the actual attendance. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For everyone. But yeah, but we, so, you know, the students that do come because they're a smaller number, um, there is that interaction. And so there's that energy and there's that connection, relationship building and, mm -hmm. and sharing. And that's the rich, rich part of being in classroom. Mm -hmm. um, online, you know, it's very digital. It's very through assignments. It's very like me sharing. And then I see the product of, you know, what they're thinking and feeling through the assignments not right. immediately. Yeah. Not immediately. Yeah. So then you're like, ooh, you know, I, especially during those weeks with the hard content and the really difficult subject matter, I really just feel and hope that they're okay. Right. Because I never know. And, and then like, I always tell like, you reach out if you need to debrief or if you don't know where to go or, you know, there's only so much you can do. But when you're in class, you can physically see them and like, you can see if somebody's shaken up mm -hmm. or, you know, if they need to go take a break. And that gives me a lot of 
comfort to know that they're leaving that classroom in an okay way. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, you know, you have, you see different things because I know I've had students who come into class and I know there's something heavy on them, but Mm -hmm. then, yeah, just checking in like before they leave after those heavy classes, like, hey, are you okay? Like what's going on? And oh no, yeah, I'm okay. And so you just kind of like, make sure you reach out to know that, uh, for them to know that you're there for them, which is like, I love that part. Cause you know, when you're in school or in your community, you do have that energy and you could read people better. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. So you've talked a little bit about this, right? But we're, we're more curious about what types of teaching strategies or methods you're using. So you say it's really important for you to share about yourself um, but there's also this notion of reading the room, right? And seeing how your sharing is landing for the students. Is it helping? Is it sort of bringing them out and, you know, out of the experience or out of the content? Um, how do you, what are some other strategies you use to make sure that you're addressing this content in a sensitive way and in line with the needs of your students? And even, and you had said too, I mean, recently, like the difficult topic of residential schools, you brought mm-hmm. in your aunt mm-hmm. and I'm not sure if that you meant like, did she zoom into the class and, and share part of her story right. or is there a way that you, you know, you brought her in differently, but anything, yeah. When there's a topic and you think, okay, maybe either it's too much for me to put myself front and center here, or maybe there's a way that's more effective, you know, and helping students to reach this outcome that yeah. they can still get to this difficult knowledge. Yeah. So I, I would say online, that's one of the most difficult things. And so I will share how I'm feeling because I can't read. Mm-hmm. I don't see the students most times. Um, and it just, it's about how I'm feeling with uh, the content mm-hmm. and then how much of it. So if I've shared my aunt, she's passed now, but okay. um if I share about my aunt, like I, I like to share that part because I feel like I'm honoring her. Mm -hmm. I'm honoring her story, Mm -hmm. a story she's never got to tell, even though I don't know much about her story. Mm -hmm. I know the things that had happened in the schools and I'm not saying everything that had happened to her, but I just know like how she was after, Mm -hmm. um, as an auntie, you know, me being her niece and our relationship. And I know that that, part of her past molded her how she was Mm -hmm. with me. Yeah. Um, And so like, yeah, me sharing her story in terms of like the great distances she had to travel. She was taken from Moussini Moose Factory and she was put in Sault Ste. Marie, the residential school there, Shinomak. Wow. And, um, and how hard that must have been as a child, like no matter what age, you know, those Mm -hmm. children were taken anywhere between the ages of four and 16. Mm -hmm. Um, and then to return back home, but to be strong enough to be resilient enough and beautiful enough to go out and put herself out there. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, those things, like I could be very short about it one time, but then other times if I feel strong enough, I'll go into more detail Mm -hmm. and then, um, really just bring that part of that school and her experience alive, I think. And I really feel like I honor her in that way because she was just a beautiful person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You had, you had mentioned too, sometimes there are videos for certain topics, like where you can highlight other Indigenous voices mm-hmm. on certain things. Yeah. So the techniques and stuff, like I think... Um, you know, I tell my tell my students I will always bring in indigenous perspective, indigenous mm-hmm. voices. Anything I bring into class, it's from uh, the nations or uh, people's specific stories. You know, it all is about that perspective because those voices were never heard, mm-hmm. um, and they continue not to be heard very loudly. Um, so, I really, that's just my my main purpose in terms of technique. Um, and that's why I also bring in my own stories is that they get to hear, you know, that, you know, I might be in air quotes successful in mm-hmm. life, but, you know, that uh, there are things and challenging things that had happened that, you know, I had to go through and deal with and heal from mm-hmm. in order to be here. 
And, you know, like I said, everybody's journey is different and everybody's healing journey is different at any one time. Mm. And so um, we we need to just be kind and respectful in learning about each other. And all those types of principles, you know, really is kind of um, a way for me to, I guess, honor the people, honor my people, honor my family and community to just be who I am because that's how we were. Mm you know, pre-contact, pre-residential school. We were always very authentic and caring for our community, for our kids. And really that is our purpose, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And and so when we have that type of, you know, atrocity with uh, Indigenous people in the past, you know, that's going to impact everybody now. And so... I just try to really bring out those those storytelling and the perspective and, you know, handle it with care the best I can as I get into class. Okay. And sometimes, yeah, like it's been a hard week or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so you just, you know, you touch upon things, but you don't go into great detail. Um, and then, yeah, other times it's just like strong enough to share or, or remembering something different to bring in, um, depending on the time also, because, mm-hmm. you know, we're very like, you have three hours to <laughs> yeah. get through it, right? right. And um, I think after my first full year, uh, I was just remembering conversation passing that you don't have to be online for three hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like... Because <laughs> I need like four hours or five hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been trying to also um, be considerate of student workload. You mm-hmm. know, if I know the programs they're usually they end up sharing with me the program they're in, the load that maybe they're having. If they're working, you know, most of our international mm-hmm. students are also working mm-hmm. part time or two jobs or whatever they need to do. Right. Um, so yeah, just trying to be mindful. That's why I really don't want to be this course as stressful as like in the year 1867, exactly. you know, yeah. like those facts are not going to serve anybody, but yeah. what is the impact of that and how this foundational document was the creation of this that led to this, like that's the important right. piece is mm-hmm. to understand, you know, how we are today is because of the past. Yeah. And then how are we going to move forward? Because we know this now. So like, that's like very trying to be holistic Mm -hmm. and be very mindful of all those other things that play when you're in this, you know, classroom, you know, teacher student relationship and balancing it all and, um, wanting to, I guess, just have everybody benefit from that. Does it ever feel... Like too much. Like, do you ever get to the end of the semester and you've got all these brilliant, like, reflective pieces to read about mm-hmm. their own stories and their own ideas of allyship? Do you ever sit down and think, "Geez, I wish this was just a multiple choice exam I could <laughs> sign off on"? No, no, no. <laughs> and and that's why, like, I was so intentional about you know wh- what was going to be my outcome, mm-hmm. and then I started with that because, like, I have to enjoy this process too. Yeah. And when I first came in, the course that was, you know, it was designed already, but I had to go in and revise it because I was the one delivering it. Mm-hmm. The person who created that content was in a different space and experience and, you know, whatever level of education they had had, they brought themselves into that content. Yeah. Whereas I had to also do the same. And so, you know, everybody does it different and I had to do and put my own stamp on it because like I said, like I have to do this every semester multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's just, it was a process, but it's like, Very intentional because I get excited to see and hear what students want to do after they leave the class. Yeah. Like this is your learning and this Mm -hmm. is you. Like, what do you want to do now? It's totally up to you. Like, I'm not going to come in and say, you didn't do this ABC by this date. Like now it's just on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like I've done my part and now it's your own, you know, um, holding yourself 
accountable for the things that you said you were going to do. That's it. Yeah, now it's the course. And now go into community, yeah. the broader community. Yeah. Yeah. Go into your this. career with this information <laughs> and see what you can do, or even just personally, right? Yeah. So a lot of the students will like say a lot of like the learning they want to do, they want to explore more reading books or whatever it is, you mm-hmm. know. And all of it is 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 great. Mm-hmm. And I get excited to to know that they're going to continue. Hopefully they'll continue on. Mm-hmm. In my mind, they're going to continue yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. At least most of them will. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. You know, I mean, again, it's up to them. And, and, and hopefully, you know, they had a good experience so that they can want to feel like they want to do something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much, Sandra. We're, you shared so much so many rich experiences and, and, and stories and, and, you know, the way that you showed up and really appreciate it. And unfortunately we're coming to the time where we need to wrap up. Yeah. Um, we have one last question and we have been known to say it's the last question and then it's not. And there's like part <laughs> ABC. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but let, let's try this. Um, so as you continue this work, Share with us what's one thing you've learned about teaching topics that are so close to your heart or hit close to home um, that has stuck with you. So if you had an opportunity to talk to someone else who's earlier on in their journey of doing something like you're doing, teaching something where they have lived experience of it, what sort of information would you convey to them? What would you share about what you've learned in the process? It's a big question. So take your time. Yes, take your time. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be one big thing. It could just be a summary of what you've already shared. You've shared a lot of great pieces of, of, of information. And okay. So let me just make sure I understand yeah. your question. <laughs> what would I, Even what advice say, would I give to somebody? Yeah, a new, let's say a new faculty member going to yeah. be teaching some of these indigenous studies mm-hmm. courses. Oh, okay. Maybe, you know, also indigenous themselves and, mm-hmm. They come to you and say, "Wow, there's some heavy, some heavy topics <laughs> this semester." Yeah. yeah. What what kind of advice would you give? Them? Okay. Yeah. Um, geez. I mean, there's so much, right? Yeah. There um, is. I would. I think at the end of the day, the best little nugget I would be able to give in like an elevator pitch is just take care of yourself. Mm. And make sure, yeah, that you're you're taking care of your whole self because what I find, and we do, we've had faculty come on, um, right now we're all women, um, but when you're a woman in any position, you tend to put yourself all out there all the time. Yeah. And I think that's where... My learning was, is just like, you can take a half step back and still be okay. Mm -hmm. Still be present. Yeah. Yeah. And still be enough. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, but in order for you to do that, you really need to understand yourself and how you take care of yourself and, uh, to be, to be who you are, um, in the moment. And that really just comes back. Again, holistically, uh, if we think of cycles, I always think like you're coming back to your own authentic self at the end of the day Mm -hmm. and being okay with that and just knowing like you're taking care of yourself. Mm. Yeah, Yeah. that's what I would say. Because then they'll be able to stay on the job longer, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's that right. That burnout that you talked about at yeah. the start it won't yeah. happen, right? And we want. <laughs> yeah. Because if you don't yeah. take those breaks, like you said, in the yeah. moment when you're like, okay, I know I'm I'm feeling like I need a break, then mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to go as long as you want and make that impact, continue to make that impact. That's right. right. And yeah. then you turn to be like just this, like recording, you could press play. Yeah. 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 You know, and... I've thought about that. (laughs) I could just make a webinar, you know, but no, because it's the connections that you make in with your students. And that's like the authentic piece about, and that's, I think really feel like not that anybody else is not authentic, but just like, I think really, yeah, just how first nations people are is that we just really try to be the best we can be in the moment and bring that authentic self forward. And so if it, if it's anger, then you see angry people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if it's sad, you see sad people. And if you feel, yeah. you just see people in their true self, in their, yeah, their true holistic self. And um, 
you need to nurture the best parts of those to be better. Yeah. And when you take care of yourself, you get to you get to you get to be more the next time. Mm. And that's why I think like, oh, I could share the story and it's not hitting me as I did before. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I think that's the most important part is just really self care. Yeah. Yeah, that's much <laughs> right beside your computer screen if you're teaching that. Yeah. It's going. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. going. Yeah. So smart. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sandra. Um, it's been a real delight to talk with you. And I know this will be, you know, the first of many continued conversations on this subject. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you both. Yeah. Thanks so much, me. Sandra. Mm-hmm. Well, we've come to the end of another episode of My Favorite Lesson a podcast hosted by Teaching and Learning at Conestoga. You can find other episodes in this series and more by visiting Teaching and Learning at Conestoga College on YouTube and by following My Favorite Lesson on Spotify. Subscribe to be notified each time a new episode becomes available. And for 24-7 support for all things teaching and learning related, please check out our faculty learning hub at tlconestoga.ca. And with that, I'm Dr. Lauren Spring, And I'm Dr. Sarah Kafashan. And we'll see you next time.